Begin the examination of the motor system by observing the patient's body position at rest and during movement. I'm going to move these up for a minute. Also, watch for involuntary movements. Can I see your hands? Next, assess muscle characteristics beginning with muscle bulk. To do this, carefully inspect the muscles of the shoulders, arms, hands, thighs, and legs, noting any atrophy. Let me do all the work here. Then, evaluate the patient's muscle tone or resistance to passive stretch. Encourage the patient to relax. Then take one hand in yours and, while supporting the elbow, flex and extend the patient's fingers, wrist, elbow, and shoulder in one coordinated movement. The patient's arm should move easily and smoothly with little resistance. Repeat on the other side. Once again, let me do all the work. To assess muscle tone in the legs, extend the patient's leg at the knee and move the foot up and down at the ankle. Note the patient's resistance to your movements. Assess muscle strength using force compatible with the patient's strength. Usually, the patient's dominant side is stronger than the non-dominant side. Begin by testing flexion and extension at the elbow by having the patient pull and push against your hand. Straighten it out, push away. Bend your fist back. Next, test extension of the wrist. Make a fist. Bend your fist back. Around my fingers. Now test Squeeze the patient's grip. You Cross your middle and out. index fingers to protect them. Good. Then ask the patient yeah. to squeeze as hard as possible squeeze while you try to remove your fingers. Normally, you should have trouble removing them. Continue testing muscle strength by asking the patient to turn his palm down and spread his fingers. Check abduction by trying to force them together. Relax for a second. Then test opposition of the thumb. To do this, ask the patient to try to touch the tip of his little finger with the thumb while you resist the movement. To assess coordination, you'll evaluate rapid alternating movements and point-to-point -point movements. Begin by assessing rapid alternating movements. To assess the arms, show the patient how to move his hands. Observe the speed, rhythm, and smoothness of the movements. The patient's dominant hand may be better coordinated. Using your right hand, I'd like you now to Now ask the patient to tap the distal joint of his thumb with the tip of his index finger as rapidly as possible. And the other hand? Again, observe the movement's speed, rhythm, and smoothness. Touch the tip of my Next, finger with assess point-to-point right point point movements. Do this several times, moving your finger so that the patient has to change directions. Observe the smoothness and accuracy of pointing. Clumsiness and overshooting with this movement suggest cerebellar disease. Then, with your finger in one place, ask the patient to point to it, raise his arm, and lower it to touch your finger. After several times, have the patient do this with his eyes closed. Inaccurate pointing with the eyes closed suggests a loss of position sense. Repeat on the other side. I want you to tap my to hand assess leg coordination, ask the patient to tap your hand as quickly as possible with the ball of each foot. Note any slowness or awkwardness. Compare sides. The feet normally perform less well than the hands. To test point-to-point -point movements of the legs, ask the patient to place one heel on the opposite knee and then run it down his shin to the big toe. The patient should be able to do this smoothly and accurately. Note any tremor or awkwardness. Assess both legs. Continue the examination by observing the patient's gait, which provides information about coordination, position sense, and muscle strength. Slowly across the room. Turn, As the patient walks, observe his posture, balance, arm swing, and leg movements. The gait should be relaxed and balanced with easy alternating arm swings. The face and head should lead the rest of the body on turns. Next, 
ask the patient to walk heel to toe in a straight line. This kind of gait, also called tandem walking, assesses cerebellar function and position sense. Then have the patient walk on his toes to test the strength of plantar flexion and on his heels to test dorsiflexion at the ankles. These actions also test balance. Next, ask the patient to hop in place, hop and first down. on one leg and then the other. This ability indicates an intact motor system in the legs, normal cerebellar function, and good position sense. Good. I want you to stand just on your Finally, leg. ask the patient to do a shallow knee bend, first on one leg and then on the other. Down. Perform the Romberg test, which primarily tests position sense. To do this, ask the patient to stand with his feet together. Normally, he should be able to maintain this posture with his eyes open, indicating intact cerebellar function. Now have the patient do the same thing for 20 to 30 seconds with his eyes closed. His posture should remain steady with only minimal swaying, indicating intact position sense. Open if the eyes. patient maintains this posture with his eyes open, but not with his eyes closed, he has a positive Romberg test. Now check for pronator on. drift. Straight to down. do this, ask the patient to hold his arms forward and parallel with the palms up and to close now his close eyes, eyes for 20 to 30 seconds. Normally, the patient can maintain this position, but watch for downward drifting of one arm and pronation of the forearm, which suggest mild hemiparesis. Stay just as you are. Don't Finally, the ask the patient to keep his arms up and eyes closed while you tap the arms briskly downward. Normally, the patient's arms return smoothly to the horizontal position.